It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superhero Slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's Superhero Slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV movies and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris. And my name is Mike. And this week, we've got the trailer for Marvel Overwatch clone game called Marvel Rivals. This it yes, was very I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure Chris will uh, explain everything to me because yeah. <laughs> I, like, I understood some of those words. I, I, I'm excited. This is like the third week in a row. It feels like we've had a Marvel game reveal kind of going on here. Mm-hmm. So uh, I feel like they're in their um, their their golden slash silver era of gaming. Uh, uh, the Thunderbolts filming is underway with a walkthrough video from one of the actresses, if you will. So it's okay. There's no there's no spoilers on this, sadly. But we're gonna talk about some stuff we saw. And I got a theory. I got a theory, Mike. I'll lay it on you later. All right. Uh Spider Verse gets a new fundraising short film clip. It's just a short it's a seven minute thing on YouTube. Uh and more. Yes, Chris will be explaining <laughs> many things to me on this episode, which I appreciate uh very much. Uh, I keep forgetting that it is a holiday here in the States yes. known as uh, Easter. So if this is a holiday you celebrate, I wish you a bountiful harvest of eggs because it's the yeah. only thing I really associate I, with it. Um, well, all the candy can make some deals colorful, tomorrow. Yes, that's true. All the, all the, all the Reese eggs. Ooh, uh, I'm actually surprised because this is the season of the Reese's Mallow Cup, which is a Reese's Cup that has a little bit of like marshmallow in it. And uh-huh. it's delicious um I, I haven't picked one up yet this season that which is shocking me now but i can get it probably 50 percent off tomorrow so thanks so, for the reminder oh you're welcome i bought a package of uh reese's pieces uh eggs so imagine the pieces but they're like larger egg shaped kind of like a like a peanut m&m size i'm like that's pretty good they're they're good for you know a, a small dose if you're looking for some of those um, if you need that thick Reese's Pieces uh, hit. There's a hardly any chocolate on it, which I think is the best part. The 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 inside of that that fake peanut butter to to candy shell ratio is pretty pretty solid, actually. Yes, uh, if you're uh, like Chris and avoid uh, chocolate mostly, uh, you'll be good to go with Reese's Pieces. Yes, that my wife also got. I believe it was um, is it Jolly Ranchers or Starburst or something? Jelly beans, Skittles, Jelly beans, maybe this year. Um, she's a big fan of those and she's also a, a huge fan of peeps which are not my go-to candy by any means mike i don't know if you're a fan of peeps or not uh, peeps are peeps are a rare occurrence in this household but we mm. do like marshmallow my wife is would definitely be one of those children in that experiment where of like oh if you wait we'll give you like two marshmallows like mm-hmm. uh she's eating that She's eating that marshmallow in front of her right away and yeah. then just begging anyone around her for another one. Oh, so absolutely. marshmallows absolutely. to me have always been like, I view them more as like an ingredient for very delicious things, but on their own, not quite enough to get me uh, oh. excited. So the same translates to a peep. You, I, I'm, I'm the other way. Uh, I'm, I'm for burning marshmallows on a stick. That's about the extent of my marshmallows, Mike. I don't want them in anything. Uh, I'm, I'm not a huge <laughs> fan of marshmallows. So Rice Krispie treats are really not even on my like realm of like things I, I enjoy very frequently. Um, but I do love burning a marshmallow on a stick. Uh, it's the inner pyro in me that comes out. And I just <laughs> think, yeah, it's just the, <laughs> the act of carbonizing something. Yeah, uh, it just makes me think I was literally just watching uh, the Terminator, uh, James Cameron's original uh, Terminator film just before we recorded this and lots of explosions mm-hmm. uh, and I forgot that uh, uh, Arnold gets his like eyebrows burned off in the movie uh, about halfway through and uh, he just looks like a Super Saiyan level 3 for the rest of the movie Oh, nice! because um, it just been so long since I've seen the first one because my brother and I uh, just grew up like watching Terminator 1 and 2 on repeat over and over and over again but we always kind of 
preferred watching the sequel, you know, because there's more action, you know, there's mm-hmm. more adventure, there's two Terminator, so there's two, it's just, there's more of everything, so we always watch that one more. Then also, like, you know, the the protagonist, you know, is like a teenage boy, so we're like, oh yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. So, watching the first one, after so long, was like, very refreshing. I'd forgotten it, like so many things that happened in the movie. It's a straight horror film. Like it, it's like the second one is very bombastic in action, right? There's the canal scene mm-hmm. and the semi trucks and all of the action. I, of course, there are scary moments as well, but that first one is truly a horror film uh, through and through. Oh yeah. More, more, more so than that second one. Cause that second one just goes bigger. It goes more, it goes all in mm-hmm. like a sequel would. And, but that first one, people forget how tiny and claustrophobic it is at sometimes. Like you just don't mm-hmm. know what's going to pop out of the shadows at you in that movie. And I just love, I just love all of like the Sam Winston special effects, like aesthetic of the eighties, like the stop motion, the miniatures, the, um, Sam Winston. Yeah. What did I say? Sam Sam, Winston. 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 I was like, like, who is Sam Winston? (laughs) All like all of the little tricks of the camera Mm -hmm. of just like, well, we can't actually show this robot eye inside of Arnold just yet. Yeah. We don't have the technology just yet. So we're going to make like a fake of his head, but then we'll put it on like real human shoulders. We'll swap it out on a cut and everything. Yeah. It was, yeah, it's just, it's pretty fascinating. It's just like, I do like the ambition of the eighties of just Mm -hmm. like, we're not going to let, are the limitations of technology stop us from telling this very heavy science fiction story, but we, we just need to be conservative with I, our shots and, you know, not, not just like linger on something and ruin the moment, ruin the magic. I love everyone's uh, view in the eighties of, of how a dystopian future was like their tall mm-hmm. building. Like if you look at Blade Runner, you look at Terminator, you look at like alien, even like, two of those are James Cameron, but like everyone's view of like a dystopian future was all the same, right? It was rainy. It was dark. It was cities. And there was technology that we still don't even have to this day everywhere uh, kind of things. And I, I know the Terminator, like I think one had a little bit of the future, right? When Kyle Reese was talking about the future, um, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So, I mean, I just, I just love everyone just agreed like a silent agreement. Yeah. The future is going to be shit. And here's what it's going to look like. Everybody. <laughs> uh, along the way but um yeah no that, that's that's a that's a fun that's a fun one to go back to uh you yeah, know that's my, the go ahead and that's the i was gonna say that's the goal of this week's podcast we're yeah. gonna we're gonna make we're gonna record a great show and then we're gonna get out of here and i'm gonna yeah. go watch the sequel right after we're yeah. done recording yeah mike's probably tired of me talking about this uh already but i, I bought that laser disc player and literally two of the laser discs i bought were terminator one and two this week because uh, they they just came out in that time frame right where everyone was trying to get home releases on all that fun stuff. Mm. Um, I did not ask you though. I, I did get a lot of the James Bond movies and, and friend of the show Brian. I actually FaceTimed him because he's one of the biggest James Bond fans I know, like retro Bond. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm like Brian, tell me which ones I should get of this collection uh, before I bought the whole collection. Uh, and he gave me a list of old Bonds. Do you have any old Bond movies in the Connery? Um, Roger Moore era that stick out to you that you were like, yeah, I watched these. I didn't watch a lot growing up. I didn't really get to Bond until Daniel Craig kind of came through myself. No, this would be like a this is this would be a great question for uh, my older brother who is three years older than me. He really gravitated towards the Bond films to where he had every Bond movie on VHS when they had those really big box set releases, mm-hmm. and of course after like all of his allowances and like part-time jobs or whatever, like the second, you know, he, he buys that last box set volume release, right. Is when like DVDs invented and Uh he has to like rebuy all of them again. Uh, but no, I was uh, a Pierce Brosnan era. That's, that was my bond. And to me as a kid going back and watching older ones just felt too vintage and antiquated. Uh, I'm sure I could get a lot more joy out of them going back and watching them now, but mm-hmm. yeah, no, Pierce Brosnan is kind of where well, it starts for me. Then, then you'll be glad to know um, I got GoldenEye. Then I was the only one that's not a Roger Moore uh, one Perfect. or, or, or uh, Sean Connery one, uh, because boy, those old ones feel sexist. Boy, they feel so sexist when you look at them, <laughs> uh, womanizing through and through. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm still looking forward to take take on that. Uh, and before we get into our, our topics uh, for the week, because Mike was talking about, he's I'm going to talk about what I watch uh, in theaters this weekend. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe our video if you're on YouTube or anywhere, really. We're trying uh, to put ourselves out there in so many different 
places uh, for this. So, but Saturday, Mike, I was able to take part in what I believe is the biggest uh, domestic or maybe it was global uh, opening of the year so far. Godzilla Kong, uh, New Empire. Is it New Empire? Yeah, not Frozen Empire. That was Ghostbusters. New Empire. Uh, in theaters <laughs> this weekend. I went at a 10 o'clock in the morning showing. Mike, have you ever been to a 10 a.m. showing on a movie? Or at least recently? Oh, I have. I, I, I love yeah. it. You just get to you get to watch it, and then you have your whole day ahead of you afterwards. There's no one in line at the concession stands. That popcorn's mm. fresh. That pop, You see them pe- popping it right there in front of you kind of thing. Uh, I got myself a Coke Zero and my Twizzlers. That's my go-to and watch this uh, with a couple people. Um, what was surprising about this movie, Mike, is, uh, like I said, it is so far, it beat Dune so far for opening. So um, the story I have, the, the, the story this tells me is people like watching um, dumb action movies still. Uh, I, I think, you know, I, I saw Ghostbusters. I don't think it had a s- strong of an opening last weekend, but Godzilla Kong uh, definitely did because it's a continuation of, again, the Godzilla franchise, the Kong franchise. Uh, and what I will tell you, Mike, is did you enjoy Godzilla versus Kong last time? Uh, when it came I, out? I think the word enjoyed is a stretch for any of this new mm-hmm. franchise of Kong. I have been somewhat entertained. Okay. I would as the farthest you, I would go on any of these movies. So I, I believe when we, we talked about Godzilla v Kong, it was it was during the pandemic, right? It came out on HBO Max. At the same time mm-hmm. as in theaters, so we, we were lucky. We didn't we didn't have to pay for anything because we already had a Mac subscription. Um, so that was that was a probably helped that. But we always said we need more monster fights, right? Like we watched it. You know, there's just a lot of a lot of humans, a lot of like just dull, dr- like dragged on moments. I will tell you, they took those lessons to heart, Mike, because there are monster fights after monster fights after <laughs> monster fights in this movie. There are whole sections where no dialogue is spoken or humans are seen because it's about the the huge beast Godzilla and King Kong and the the other titans if you will above and below earth in this movie um so i i think that's great there's actually i don't know if you remember it was in the Kong Skull Island uh, there's like a tribe of people on Skull Island who like mm-hmm. worship Kong um they uh they make an, a, a reappearance in this and the the thing about that tribe was they don't talk they have no language like verbal language so Mm -hmm. they were so intent on not making people talk in this movie they used another culture that has no verbal language whatsoever (laughs) uh like they they were like we don't want people to ruin this movie because people just you know last time it was just bogged down with all that stuff and it was weird like it just kind of ruined the momentum this time there are like four main characters other than the kaiju uh rebecca green uh dan stevens uh you know you know dan stevens of legion i remember that guy yeah Mm -hmm. he's he's a great guy uh brian tyree henry shows back up he's the um well i would call this version this 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 show's podcast he he ran the blog on kaiju and stuff in the last one um and then a, a little girl that the girl who was on skull island last time and Kong. that's it other than that there's hardly anybody other humans in this movie mike that's how much they were like we're taking it down we're bringing it back <laughs> down to the monster fights and um i will say a couple of the scenes you know it starts off with an action scene in hollow earth and then you get some stuff with godzilla godzilla he is just a fucking beast in this movie man like he, he just goes for it like it, it's it's kind of brutal in, in some cool ways so um, I, I had a good time. This is not going to change your mind. If you are, if you, if you're on the fence of Godzilla Kong movies, this isn't going to change your mind, but they doubled down on what worked. And rather than sticking like, Hey, uh, we want to bring more humans in and show the human side of this story. It's not about that. It's not about it at all. It's about the monsters and we know, and they know that and they, they really give it to us. So um, yeah, this is this is the perfect cross section of an HBO Max or I guess just Max streamed movie for me, right? There's like just enough curiosity. Uh, yeah. I have um, also the correct amount of like sunk cost. Of, I've already spent like so many hours in this it's universe free. already. Okay. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I might as well get back into it. So yeah, I'll probably I'll probably check yeah. it out a little bit. But I I, I I just I already know exactly how I'm gonna feel when the movie is yeah. over, right? <laughs> so it's like I'm gonna be a totally unchanged yeah. uh, man. But but uh, it's, it's I, definitely I worth the stream. If, it's definitely worth the free yeah. stream. Yeah. 
I wonder if maybe the performance also is related to just not a ton of competition out there right now. I mean, you did mention Doom, which came came out a few weeks ago, and I feel that feels like the type of movie where everyone who really wanted to see it kind of went and saw mm-hmm. it right when it came out. They were waiting. It was the part two, um, but usually, like I, I mean, I I thought Ghostbusters would actually give it a run for its money. If I'm going to be completely I mean, honest, I mean, did it? I I mean, I've heard I've heard people go back and forth on the quality of that movie, so I I won't speak to that because I haven't even seen it. But I haven't heard anybody really talk about mm-hmm. Ghostbusters at all, except for you. Like, I don't think pop culturally it really moved the needle. Yeah. in any way but i mean uh who am there I? there was to no judge, ecto cooler but... that's why if you don't have ecto cooler <laughs> you're doomed to fail exactly but usually what do we have historically kind of towards the end of march it's typically like a pretty big marvel movie mm-hmm. i think march was a, a month for it was gonna be uh, captain america i believe last time yeah before it was yeah march. i'm trying to think in the past like was, well, was civil Cap- war a march a March movie? I don't think Civil War was, right. but Winter Soldier was. Um, mm. I, I believe, uh, you know, Black Panther was February. They, they kind of mix in the spring a little bit there with some of them, historically. Yeah, so I wonder if maybe that has kind of helped. You know, there's always just going to be a, um, a desire for movies mm-hmm. in the month of March. So when Marvel isn't there to suck up a lot of those free dollars, uh, everyone else comes uh- on in. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking a look here. I, I really thought, um, you know, yeah, I, I agree you, Dune. I think Kung Fu Panda 4 is out, even though that's not, you know, in our wheelhouse, if you will. Um, Ghostbusters, Godzilla. I can't even think of anything I saw in the theater, Mike, uh, when I was in there, like promotions or posters for anything else when we walked in. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I don't – it's just one of those things, like it's doing, it's doing the right things, and I don't – other, we were talk, literally talking about this before the show. We, what is the next movie we need to watch in theaters? Other than I would say, like I said, Deadpool to you. I'm like, what's next? I don't even know what's coming, right? Of for for the next couple months. Yeah, I mean, and nothing specifically. I would say for uh, for this for this show. I think there's like a new. Like is, is that new Planet of the Apes movie out yet? Oh, or? that's that's a May that's a May one. I saw that that they had a trailer for that. It's a May one. Um, Guy Ritchie's The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare is in April. Um, which oh, I obviously, Chris, I can't believe. I mean, I, we won't be going to the theater for it, of course. But uh, Rebel Moon, oh, part two, we got to be there. Butts and seats on the couch. That's that's, that's true. I, f- I forgot about that. <laughs> that'll be, that'll be saving me a movie ticket. Um, I'm trying to think trailers I watched. Uh, was Bad Boys movies and there's another one of those coming yeah there's know? another one of those that might be i want to see i'm curious about the movie uh uh monkey band with dave patel yeah uh, that one i believe was kind of supposed to be a straight to streamer release but i guess uh whoever owns it was impressed by the quality so it's getting a theatrical okay. release so i'm hoping that's good and that's a jordan peele produced as well yeah uh, I'm, I'm extremely nervous about this a24 movie uh civil war because uh, oh. I just I, I like I, it could be good, but I am very nervous of how it's going to yeah. make me feel. And like the subject matter seems very intense right now here yeah. in this country with an election year. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take a step back yeah. and wait and see how that one goes. Yeah, uh, there there was that it was um two horror films. Was it the uh, the first Omen and the Watchers, which is the next Shyamalan movie, or not? It's not uh. M Night Shyamalan. I think it's it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a relation. Uh, Ishana Night Shyamalan is doing that. Um, oh, Despicable Me. Yeah, there it is. That's that's the one coming out <laughs> of May that, that people are doing. So, um, yeah, I'm just not seeing a lot, uh, you know, going on. But but I, I had a good time with this. Uh, I'm glad I got to see it uh, again. Matinee. It was fun to, to watch it in the theaters uh, with that. But on the other part this week, Mike, you've asked me no fewer than four times. Have you caught the new episode of X-Men 97? And I can say confidently, as of this recording, yes, I have. I have watched oh, thank episode you were, three of X-Men 97. If you were going to say no, I was going to be furious. Yeah. Well, I, I had, other than I had some personal issues that, that were unexpected to take of, care of most of the week. Uh, and then um, yeah, finally we were able to watch it. Well, once we, everything kind of calmed down uh, this weekend. So yeah. 
Because um, if you're if you're unaware, listeners, for the for the next five weeks, this is an X Men '97 uh, themed podcast. Yes. In ev- in every way, uh, we're yeah. going to be trying to jam in every SEO uh, keyword, every image, whatever we can do to make this yeah. uh, as X Men '97 as possible because it is popping off out there, folks. Yes, and it, uh, it, it again, it's on Disney Plus. Uh, you know, for, we're two weeks in, three episodes out. I have. Before we begin, Mike, anecdotal evidence from um, a listener of the friend, a uh, listener of the show and friend Luke. He said, uh, he, he texted me earlier. He says uh, his wife loved X Men 97, so it, we're three for three on wives enjoying X Men 97. Yeah, if anyone else out there is uh, has an un, has a surprisingly unfamiliar spouse with uh, the X-Men universe and is getting into X-Men 97 We're we're taking tallies. Yes. So we got three. That's impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I, I went ahead and put some time codes in here, Mike. So let's go ahead and, and get into episode three discussion because I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to preface this. Okay. Last week I asked you, Mike, do you want me to tell you what this episode is going to be about? And you I said, said no, no, do not tell me who this mysterious duplicate uh, Jean Grey is. And, um, we, we, we started watching it, and I said my, I told my wife earlier, I'm like, you want me to tell you what's going to happen? She's like, okay, sure. She's like, did you read about it online? I'm like, no, I can tell you right away after the end of last week. I know exactly what's going to happen. I, I told her, I said, this this character's name is Madeline Pryor, and they have a okay, child. Should we should we just go ahead and just say that like when we talk about yeah. X-Men 97, there's just going to be spoilers? Yeah, there's spoilers. <laughs> so, so I'll, okay, I'll, I'll put the spoiler thing out. So, so uh, this, this is... Um, and this is straight, taken straight from the comic books from the 1980s. Okay, so none of this is brand new information. All of this is identical from the comic books. Uh, mind you, rushed, right, because we're, we're dealing with a 20-minute timeline. Uh, the, the last episode ends with a um, Jean Grey coming to the door of the mansion while there's already a Jean Grey in the mansion. Who's the clone? What's going on here? We come to find out it's all machinations of Mr. Sinister, which is in the title. Um, I love Mr. Sinister. I think he's a cool design character. I really am sad we never got him in live action, but at the same time, yeah. I'm kind of glad we didn't. How many times did they try to get yeah. Menace, Mr. Sinister off the ground? I swear there's three like post credit scenes out there in the world yeah. with some sort of like sin- like Mr. Sinister name S- tag. It's or... Nathaniel Essex Corporation because his name was yeah, Nathaniel or th- Essex, yeah. Yeah, or there's like an Essex badge or something in the corner. Like every time they try to get him, and it would have been kind of cool to see how you translate his very like striking visuals into mm-hmm. a live action universe because he is like he's like he's like a weird like I don't even know what to call him like 1980s vampire. Well, like he's he, very striking. So he is from the 1800s. Uh, he he's very very old because uh, he's been putting mutant genes in his genes. But I would say he's like a a, a vaudevillian like um kind of goth like vaudeville and goth kind of mixed together, right? Like he's very dramatic mm-hmm. in his like he's got these things that come off his back that go up and down. Like like they're not fringe. They're not frills. What are they? Kind of thing. Um, and he's got, you know, pale skin with the diamond on his head. So like when you see Mr. Sinister, you know who Mr. Sinister is and he's into cloning. So, um, absolutely. I, I was able to call this episode, you know, before we get into full spoilers to my wife before she's like, how did you know this? I'm like, this is from the 1980s. None of this is new. This is all identical for, for this Mike. So, um, you, you've, you've made a thumbnail here for me that is very confusing for Chris. Uh, to look at. I don't know what you're <laughs> yeah. thinking. I don't know what you're feeling, but you've asked me so many times, Mike, I got to know what you, what your take is on this. Oh my God. Well, this, this, this came into my head. If you're unfamiliar with the uh, specific Simpsons reference in our future damage for the day, this is the iconic, stupid, sexy Flanders okay. Ooh, line, thank God. which you okay. may be familiar with. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I, this popped into my head because when the first two episodes aired, there was a very small minority, I think of just uh, very fragile men out there that were complaining that like gambit was in a crop top like showing his navel or something which was just like hilarious to me that even anyone found that to be problematic but also in the same episode you have like a totally shirtless uh like logan just out playing basketball i mean this is like very like um uh top gun beach volleyball Uh like coded scene and like uh, nobody really seems to have a problem with that because they under they understand like in context what is happening here. Gambit's but like too I do cool like to how- wear a crop top. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and then like in episode two, you get more of like Magneto in his in his kind of like typical like I guess superhero suit now, which mm-hmm. is like sleeveless, like skin tight. And then this episode just turns a version of Green Jean Grey into like this like uh, goth like nightclub like like latex mm-hmm. goblin this queen where... and it's like every every week there's like a sexier and sexier character which i just find so funny to me and it's like this is like the definition of just like oh we're not making this show for kids anymore like we can we can take this a little it, extra but yeah. i do find it funny the toys are still definitely for kids because if you look at the goblin queen presented in this episode compared to the official x-men 97 goblin queen action figure mm-hmm. uh she She's got a little bit more coverage on that plastic, which I just find very humorous oh, yeah. to me. So uh, if anybody out there is uh, <laughs> was complaining about Gambit, uh, you're going to have to equally complain about the female characters being scantily clad. It, I'm sorry. That's just how it goes. As, as a young child, I had a fascination with redheaded women, Mike. And I can tell you it was probably from X-Men that did it to me <laughs> along the way. Um, but you know, th- this, this episode sets up a very important character. Do you know... Who the child of uh, Scott Summers and Madeline Pryor is? So I I do know that um that like the Summers family it mm. is like there's there's like superpowers uh, scattered throughout like the lineage. I think yeah. he has like a some sort of powered father, yeah. maybe brother. He's like two brothers. Son. I just uh, yeah I, I just don't. Yeah. I don't remember what all of them do and what all they all look like when they're super powered, but I know it's like there's family lineage with different mm-hmm. powers happening here. So um, in this episode, it's, it's a very rushed version of it, but um, it, Mr. Sinister is trying to create the perfect mutant, make him invincible because of, you know, the summer's DNA and Jean Grey's um, DNA, um, you know, puts him in this vet, gets a t- techno organic virus. This child is sent to the future. Who comes from the future later in X-Men Mike? Cable. Oh, is it is it Cable? C- Cable is oh. Nathan. His name is Nathan Summers. So we just got to see the creation of uh, Cable in, 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 that they oh, used in the comic books. That's box. interesting. I never I never knew that. Yeah. So uh, when you see Cable in the comic books, now de- don't use Deadpool two as an example. That's a whole different Cable. But um, in the comic books, yeah, he is he they, he is the child of a uh, Jean Grey clone, Madeline Pryor, and Scott Summers, and that's how he gets his techno organic virus from Mister Sinister trying to. Uh, manipulated him as a child before he was sent off uh to the future to 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 control his powers and you know become the person that we we know as a time traveling uh, badass really at the end of the day um yeah. we, we, what was interesting is we got to see the original morph face in this as well i don't know if you caught that when mm-hmm. morph used his mm-hmm. original face because in the original series uh you think he dies in the first episode but he's actually captured by mr sinister and experimented on uh so that's the throwback to the original show um, and uh, we uh, Bishop, who has been around for a little bit, you find out why he's been around. His time traveling bracelet's broken, so Bishop is also sent off at the end. I thought Bishop powering up by Cyclops was awesome. Uh, whatever he, he's like, just load me up with energy. I'm going to shoot all these oh. demons down. Oh yeah, that's like the per- that's a great transition from the the context of the show is really really cool, right? The story and everything, but the visuals of this episode yeah. were like out of this world like literally the first part of the episode is kind of like that um haunted house cursed ghost demons like just absolutely Mm -hmm. wild and then you get to the the second action scene where they're fighting the goblin queen in this like super spooky mansion and the the fluidity of like the animations and like the action and the shots are just amazing watching her go toe to toe with like magneto and the glass yeah. flying the everywhere co- like the, they were oh man the color like not just her color but the color of the stained glass as well whenever mm-hmm. like it looks like a rainbow of shards coming down on magneto you know her purple and green colors uh mixing together to show her powers and then like when she's controlling other people uh, morph actually transforms into magic at one point and then um mm-hmm. he, he becomes under control of uh, the Goblin Queen, he reverts into um, Magic's demon form, which is Dark Child, uh, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But, like, uh, yeah, I agree. Like, everything about it. Again, the, the show is firing on all cylinders here, just three episodes in still uh, to 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 impress us, really, at the end of the day. And then it gets into that really, you know, um, I would say similar to Doctor Strange, body and mind, who's the person, who's the spirit kind of thing. 
uh, and just some heavy material, right? Like Jean Grey's powers manifesting, the loss of her friend, you know, the birth of their child. Who's the real Jean Grey? Who's the real mother? What's going on here? It, it was some real heavy stuff there at the end. Yeah, uh, I love that. it. It feels very kind of like um, Secret Wars, like uh, body replacement of they don't really ever tell you the audience of how long Jean Grey, the real Jean Grey has been gone for, how long the replacement has been happened. And like, it seems like, oh yeah, we're just never going to know, which is going to have this big rift between Jean and Scott of just like, well, technically were we ever married? You know, that's Mm -hmm. definitely not my son. You know, when did who was fall who in love? And, when and what, when, yeah, they, when so, was it replaced? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and this is like such a clever way to, to like kind of bring back in that, uh, that Wolverine Cyclops, like love triangle as oh, well. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, yeah, it's just great. This show is just like, I can't, uh, it's just, I'm so impressed how it just gets better every single, uh, week. And I, I was going to ask you a question, Chris. Yes. Um, so, uh, I mean, we now know that this show is just, uh, amazing. And mm-hmm. it's everything we wanted it to be, right? And then also, it is kind of striking and fun to see the on the credit scroll, you get to see executive produced by Kevin Feige on this. Because obviously, this Marvel animation is now under his purview. It even has like a similar opening title crawl to like, you know, Marvel, like What If? Yeah. And tangentially, some of the other like MCU movies. So if you were Kevin Feige right now, and we know he's a little bit more reactionary than we have known in the past, and you're seeing like, everyone loving this show like what do, what do you do going forward i mean the easiest you know answer is to make more seasons but right. w- what is next like oh. if, the, if if you're seeing this yeah. appetite out there what do you green light next oh well i i think you know with the reaction of this you go you dive into that 90s animation and you go with i would say the more popular show and that's the the, the spider-man Animated Spider-Man, right oh, from from the nineties. So glad you said that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, if 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 I had the unlimited money that Marvel essentially has, and the ability to say, look, we've done this. You know, uh, the formula is to don't break or don't fix it if it's not broken. Right, continue dive into that. I know they had what was it? There was an amazing or the Spider-Man was it Amazing Spider-Man. Um, show um but they had a, a continuation what was that called it had like a sequel though um, oh it, it was a uh, spider-man like 99 or 2099 the one where he goes to the the future is that the one you're thinking of yeah like it does something different like it, yeah it feels different right because i think there was like a like a quote-unquote sequel and it might have been just like a spiritual sequel even um but yeah you go you go tap into that immediately and, and you like okay let's get like the production started on this now they don't have to announce it if it doesn't work in you know in in the production cycle don't do it don't follow it but you you should tap into the most popular i would say even more popular than x-men was spider-man like i remember playing uh spider-man and anim- like animated show video games in the 90s right on, on the, my nintendo 64 stuff like that i don't remember playing x-men games like this so i think you go into that and you go into it hard uh if you will uh, for that now there were other shows we talked about this a little bit before a couple couple weeks ago uh maybe it was a week or two ago but um i'm trying to think what was it there was a fantastic four uh do you yeah, remember anything a, else in that era? there's a there's an iron man um i'm sure that there's other i i think what you could do too is you know obviously tap into that uh spider-man because people are aware it kind of ended I think on a, a somewhat of a cliffhanger with kind of like the their own multiversal saga that they were doing in that version. But I think maybe for some of the other characters, just bring them into this world, right? I mean, mm. you don't have to literally reboot that version right. of Fantastic Four or Iron Man, but just bring those characters into like this world and this yeah. style. It, I, it crossovers, absolutely. I, it was Spider-Man mm. Unlimited, by the way. I just looked it up. Um, so, But like there was a Silver Surfer show, an Incredible Hulk show, Fantastic Fortune and Iron Man show. I don't think you need to do that. I think I agree with you. They don't need individual shows, but maybe they work towards, like you said, a, a, an Avengers kind of team up show or like what, 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 how do we bring some of these people together into like a, a, a short run team up, you know, whenever this is kind of run its course right after a couple seasons. Mm-hmm. I, I think that would be interesting to see them, but yeah, actually bring the Fantastic Four into this. Um, you know, Iron Man, uh, Silver Surfer is great because there's obviously, you know, X-Men stuff in space. Um, 
the Hulk, the Hulk, Iron Man, Fantastic Four kind of kind of go in Spider Man in my head a little better. But yeah, I think you just you just tap into that. Like, it, it, a smart person, which I believe Kevin Feige is, would do this because that is what you need to do to to kind of tap to to be to be successful to ride this wave, right? Like, um, to to say, hey, look, we we're listening to the people, we're bringing the people show to them at the end of the day. So, um. What, is that what you, you you I mean you're green? That's what you do with this. You just yeah, love more? it. Great. Okay, cool. Well, we'll keep coming back for the next um, I guess what seven weeks, six weeks for more X Men ninety seven. If we have anything update, I would say I would probably say the last three episodes are part one, twos, and three of, of a single story. We probably wait to the end of that, but we'll see if anything's cool along the way. Uh, moving along, uh, Mike, I know you are a Hulu Disney Plus uh, package subscriber, correct? If, I, if I'm not wrong. Correct. Now, did your app get merged into one Disney Plus app this week with everyone else? I mean, I feel like I've 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 yet to see anything okay. that's specifically saying it's like one app. It seems more of like they're rebranding Disney Plus to feel a little bit more teal, almost like they've literally like smashed it the together with the Hulu yep. logo. And then just more Hulu stuff is available inside of my Disney Plus app. I mean, as long as there's things on Hulu that I can watch on there and can't watch on Disney Plus, they aren't the same app in my opinion. Like mm-hmm. I'm sure like every like Hollywood like news article and say like, oh, like Disney is like combining them in the one app. And it's just like it's not true unless I can stop paying for one of them and only yeah. have the other well, one. I, so I, but yeah, they are making the lines more blurred. Well from my understanding they've merged it. You just click on Disney Plus and then it tells you Disney Plus and Hulu and you pick which one you go into at the end of the day. So it was more of a it's not a storefront, but what I guess like a landing page for apps, if you will. Um, kind of thing. Um, ideally, they get to the point where you you pay for one, but I don't, I don't. We don't pay for Hulu, so I just want the Disney Plus version. So hopefully, they can keep them separate. But I, I don't know. Again, as someone who doesn't use either of these uh, or both of them, just one of them, I don't under. I I want to know how the experience is for people, and I didn't know if you'd had that experience yet. Um, diving into that app and having to pick. Oh, I want to go to the Hulu Land. I want to go to Disney Plus Land. All, no, so. my experience with Disney Plus is I open it on Wednesdays to watch X Men, and then I close it, and then mm-hmm. I open it next Wednesday to watch X Men. So. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I, my Xbox app has also updated to that new new color scheme, um, scheme as well. So um, I, I do know they're they're pushing that all around. Marvel Rivals, a game that was a uh, surprise announced this uh, earlier this week. Uh, we got a teaser. Hey, we're announcing a game tomorrow. Then the game was announced the next morning uh, with a trailer of not knowing anything what it was. Uh, nobody knew really anything about this, but apparently they've been doing some early open alpha or not open closed alpha testing uh, for some people. We've got some screenshots to share here, but it is a six v six game uh, coming out next year tentatively, and they will have alpha signups already open as uh, so we can do the alpha in May. But this is essentially what people are calling, and I agree with Overwatch or Valorant uh, clone, using Marvel team-ups in destructive environments. Now, Overwatch is a 6v6 game where you pick, um, I think it's actually it's 5v5 now, uh, where you pick a character who has a class, like there's a tank, an attacker, a healer, like you have, you know, like a specific role to play, if you will, on the team. And then you mm-hmm. um, either uh, kill the other team for kills, or you move... Um, you stay with an item like a like a I guess a I don't know like a it's not a train but this item and it moves forward. The closer you are to it, the more it moves forward. So the other team has to to kill the other team to keep it from moving forward. You have to kill them so it keeps moving forward, kind of deal. Um, very strategic. Very you know you you, you pick a main character and you usually plays them a lot of the times. So you get really good with them. Uh, Overwatch two launched um, a year or two years ago for free, but it had a real real botched release based on how they did the character release and stuff like that. So it's not been doing very well. Mike, you said you might've accidentally played overwatch at some point. Um, yeah, I feel like I have some, some memories of the game, but not enough to form yeah. an opinion. Yeah, I, absolutely. I get, I get it. I played a lot of overwatch. Like I even have like a Funko, one of the characters I, I, I played a lot of still over my gaming. So I'm a, I'm a big overwatch fan. So, uh, again, if the, the rule is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So essentially just do Overwatch, which has got killer gameplay, put my favorite IP over top of it, sign me up. I'm down to play this. Um, currently, the alpha will be for PC slash Steam. 
but uh, it'll probably come to consoles, and it is free to play. That was the other big part, Mike. I think that's going to be a good, easy entry, right? Sell skins, uh, you know, or whatever, you know, do the, the shop like a Fortnite does. You don't have to buy it, but if you want to look cool, buy the skins kind of thing. I think that'll be interesting. But the, the cool thing for me is the launch roster. Uh, characters, um, I didn't expect, designs I didn't expect for characters. These are all very unique. These are not movie or comic book based, but um, a lot of interesting mix of people here, Mike. I know you you even said, like, who is one of these characters as we were kind of going through it? Yeah, I had no idea who, every character on here is familiar except for Luna Snow. Never heard of her before. Yes, so Luna Snow uh, was a character who came out... Um, in uh, it was a, I think it was a game uh, a couple couple years ago. Um, she's she's a North Korean or not North Korean, sorry, South Korean based character, and she has the ability to control, um, uh, you know, cold and snow stuff. So um, so she she has that um those abilities. Um, let me see here. I'm trying to figure out. You got me. <laughs> you had my curiosity peaked. I would have loved it if she was from North Korea. North Korean, yeah. uh, the the story around a Marvel hero from there would be hilarious oh, to yeah. me. Just <laughs> slowly fighting with other superheroes for the first time. Like, oh, this yeah. is a very interesting country that you that you yeah. live in. <laughs> yes. So uh, she she also is a essentially a K-pop singer as her uh, human personality, and they actually. Uh, created uh, songs for her like appearances in the games Marvel Future Fight Marvel Super War uh, so uh, yeah she, she's cool she's just got ice powers and she's uh, she was created around 2019 um, other than that uh, Namor has a really interesting design where he's kind of like got a, like a, an attitude like a surfer attitude to him if you look at the images here or the, the one image I've, I've linked in the notes um, you know we've got some interesting character we talked about magic earlier we have magic in here magneto uh storm uh you know some guardians uh these these all look pretty cool i think uh penny parker slash spider from the across the spider verse is an interesting ad uh but she controls a mech so that that's kind of fitting any in here that, that are like drawn out drawn out to you in terms of designs yeah, it's a, I mean, it's like, I feel like they're between a little bit of like a rock and a hard place with this roster, because obviously you want the most well-known characters that you can put in here, uh, because you want people to download and play this game. Oh, I want to be Iron Man. I want to be some of these, like, of my favorite characters that I've fallen in love with on the big screen. But to me, like, in like a combat scenario, and if I'm in a video game environment, I like when they're doing more of like deep reachers, like mm-hmm. into like magic or like penny parker you know yeah. because i i want to explore some other characters that you know take so much more effort and care to kind of put into a live action universe so hopefully they'll add more of those in the future um but I, i'm not a big like games as like a service type of player right where you stick with it like long term you commit to skins and like you kind of make it part of your weekly routine of like joining with friends you know that's what like all the Fortnites of the world do right mm-hmm. uh but I, I feel like we're cursed with the knowledge that most like ip based games just don't stick around very long right it's the original ip like dreamed up by a video game studio that wants to own like the whole like stack of creative that lasts the longest because they want to put the time and effort into building something that they can own in perpetuity forever so i look at this marvel rivals game and i go oh this looks fun i feel like you could jump in and have a good time but I don't see why most people would ever invest a lot of their time and money into something that I could very easily see the headline in like 18 months. Like, Oh, the game is like mm-hmm. shutting down or nobody's playing it or, you know, cause we've been, we've been burned before with online service, uh, yeah. Marvel games. Uh, and also, uh, like the art looks cool. Uh, but the first thing that I thought when I saw it and it kind of made me like a little depressed about the state of AI art is just I'm not saying or claiming that this is AI art, but this is almost exactly I feel like what a bot would push out if you say like, oh, draw me an Iron Man in the style of like Valorant, right? And then you would get something that kind of looks like this. And I don't I don't blame them because all of these characters look so cool, but my brain is so poisoned by yeah. the AI art machine that I'm just I'm always looking for like, oh, did they draw this finger weird or something? At least as of right now, when you have to translate the characters into a video game, you know, you can't have like a piece of AI 
AI art, you yeah. know, make that model. That model has to be so like precise and um, optimized that you can't just have like some sort of random artifact there. But um, what, what yeah, it's you... a it's a weird it's a weird place to be. I, this is I'm not the audience for this game, but yeah. it's definitely a game I'll be watching and seeing how it develops over the next couple months. I, I would say the um, well, I my disappointment on this is when you announce a game and you're like us oh, coming out next a, a year away, like I'm, I'm instantly out because I like the high level if i can play this sooner than later then yes like don't wait and say hey you, you can look at this now in a year the game industry in a year is going to be entirely different right like what we play now what we play in a year what we play in two years is is going to be interesting uh i sent you earlier this week in call of duty Warzone. they've added cheech and chong skins uh, <laughs> next month um you, when we were playing Warzone in 2021 uh, 22, I never would have thought, oh, yeah, they're going to do a Cheech and Chong crossover. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I, get the game thing just changes so quickly. So I think the delay is the worst part. I will say one of the, the interesting things is this. It's a um, multiversal war of essentially Doctor. the stories two Doctor Dooms from different universes are fighting, um, opening up different universes. So if you don't like these characters or these designs, there will be opportunities, I'm sure, to buy more recognizable ones or ones from the comic books or even more, you know, unique ones, if you will. Oh yeah. They the will give you as many opportunities as they can dream up <laughs> yeah. to sell you something. But, um, but because it is in these two universes that are not technically in the comics or movies, they do have the luxury of, uh, again, designing them how you want uh, or how they want to a little bit. They, they look, you know, again, like they would fit in to me, I would say more than Valorant, it's more like Apex Legends designs a little bit, if you would, in some of these characters. Um, just kind of how I don't know if it's the angles, the colors, the poses. I, I don't know, I haven't really figured it out yet, but I'm interested in this. A lot of people also called out again, as you mentioned, uh, you yeah, know, they will probably be adding characters over time. Where's Captain America? Where's Thor? Where's the popular ones? But you know, you know, the fact that we are getting a game with magic or and and like rocket as a, as a standalone character despite his short stature i'm i'm very excited for for those opportunities to play it and even if it's free and you don't spend any money on skins and it shuts down 18 months it's still free that that's the cool part about this um the other thing that this game has that the other games don't have is team ups and you can kind of see that in the trailer um an example a well-known example is rocket raccoon is able to jump on groot's back and shoot from him so you get like a uh -huh. two at the same time there's um I, I think an image on their site where bruce banner as a hulk um is able to give gamma radiation to iron man to charge up his uh, unibeam reactor uh as a team up so i'm excited to kind of see how some of these team ups kind of play together throughout that so um, check out that trailer in our show notes and check out the roster uh, there as well. Another video that came out this week, it's not a spoilery video, but you know, it's obviously a very curated uh, promotional release video, if you will, for Thunderbolts. Um, it came out uh, on Florence Pugh's own video stuff, and then it was shared to Marvel, so you know it's real. It's not like, oh, we accidentally filmed it. Um, so she's on set filming Thunderbolts, so that confirms that Thunderbolt is in production which is cool it also shows the title has an asterisk now um which was an interesting touch on that um which kind of maybe gives me the possible like the, they're indicating that this is just a stand like a standing title until they can change it later maybe um because the thunderbolts are essentially run by thunderbolt ross general ross who is now played by harrison ford in the mcu but harrison ford isn't in this movie so why are they calling it the thunderbolts uh, ho hopefully the title makes sense later. I don't know. Um, yeah, that is a good point. And also since they have to be extraordinarily more strategic now over at Marvel before they kind of re-release themselves back out into the world and try to prove to audiences that they should be coming back in droves to Marvel, maybe they are kind of questioning, is Thunderbolts... You know, is that what we want to use? Is is there any way mm -hmm. we can incorporate the word Avengers into this title right. in any way? You know, maybe there's some secret sort of, Avengers. Uh, I mean, it's like a secret Avengers kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, or like, I mean, I don't know if Dark Avengers quite yeah. fits the the roster, uh, yeah. but I I wouldn't be totally shocked if maybe that's a pivot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the like, I can't think of a title where an asterisk doesn't mean something, but like. Knowing that this is an asterisk, it just the, the a thin font Thunderbolts asterisk on these like director's chairs or an actor's chairs tells me like, oh, this is just temporary. That's what it feels like. Like this is just a placeholder 
until you know something comes out of this um down the road now one of the things they didn't really show anything on this you know it's very carefully calculated and filmed um but it looks like it's in like an underground like maybe like um you know shield or or not hydra but like you know one of those facilities that the government facility who's like running the, the superhero stuff is and um you know rumor was always that the sentry was going to be found in like a bunker somewhere so maybe this is the scene where they're finding the sentry for the first time in the in the movie so i don't know i there's really nothing i could pull out of this i even watched videos of like they're trying to break it down they're like yeah this is very carefully calculated to not really <laughs> reveal anything at all but uh florence Pugh, a, a great actress you know uh, uh riding high off uh dune part two and um you know other things she's been in so uh smart smart marketing move overall uh blade a little quick update on this um the production weekly i think it's like a magazine or like a um online report now they don't really do magazines uh, says that, that they're shooting for a fall time frame for production this year for 25 to meet that 2025 release date so it sounds like things are moving wow. well behind the scenes now <laughs> for this yeah to see things uh, it seems like the the script has finally uh uh coalesced in some way which yeah. uh is nice to hear <laughs> Yeah, I, I um, you know, this uh, this movie still feels uh surreal uh, since it's been announced five years ago at Comic Con. So maybe we'll actually get uh them to shoot it and, and release it uh in time for for late late next year. On the flip side of that, um, one of the for Fantastic Four, the Scoopers are out there saying that the movie takes place in an alternate universe, and it ends with it coalescing in the Secret Wars with the universes uh, tying together. I think I pitched this as like an idea a couple months ago, maybe. Um, so I, I can't say maybe they're listening to our show and stealing our ideas. Um, or, you know, it's completely, it could be completely wrong. And people are just saying that because there's like hardly any news out of fantastic four, right? We, everyone wants to know what it is. We all want to see it in action other than the artwork, but I've not really heard anything concrete out of this movie yet. Like, um, would it, would it, would it, with an alternate universe fantastic four where it just ends and then they're all in secret wars and they come out into one universe at the end bother you you think or are you just like yeah, yeah i don't fine. know i mean it seems like uh if you do alternate universe if you do a different decade it seems like they're all going to end up on some sort of battle planet at some mm. point in time so uh, i guess it doesn't really kind of change the idea of what i think in my head of the movie yeah. uh we've seen that you know, concept art that came out on Valentine's Day, or at least the illustrations that they seem very vintage and back in the 60s, I believe. Yeah. So if it's in an alternate universe, it could just be a slightly different one, just so they don't have to worry about like, oh, well, why don't they know like Howard Stark or, you know, why yeah. aren't they playing with other like things that happened back in the 60s? Do, do they do they not know about is captain america currently frozen in yeah. ice right now you know do they have, so maybe do they that even just have a hand america. waves yeah yeah maybe that kind of hand waves some of that stuff away yeah i think it would help alleviate you know again we, we get, you get to the point in the mcu where continuity is is king but how do you retroactively go back 50 60 years now right without throwing a, a, a wrench into everything but i think it's possible with the right story and the right the right right verse but like you know at the same time as long as it's a good movie, I don't care where they set it at the end of the day. We just want a good one. Uh, I'm going to put this under Daredevil Born Again because I don't know where to put it. But uh, Finn Jones on his Instagram stories has shared a picture of him uh, with a book of the uh, a travel bag with a never ending story, some clothes, and a copy of the final issue of Power Man and Iron Fist, Mike. Um, is he teasing a return to Iron Fist? Oh. Um. <laughs> I mean, it seems like it. If I, if we had to take it at face value, this is a professional actor with you know, you know, a team of people, or at least not if not a team, you know, a publicist that's you know telling them what to do and what to post. You know, yeah, yeah I guess we could take it. There is a version of me that just thinks nobody's called him and he feels left out. So, yeah. oh, maybe if I post a picture of this, uh, if this Iron we Fist uh, comic book, maybe they'll call me. Well, we have talked about, you know, with the Netflix shows um, now in canon with the MCU and Daredevil filming, he could technically make an appearance briefly as Iron Fist with Luke Cage, right? Like just just a blink and you miss it kind of thing or a very small scene to reference all that stuff. Um, because in Shang-Chi 
2, we talked about a couple of week, uh, weeks ago, The Wreckage of Time, about using a different Iron Fist completely, uh, either from the future or the past. Uh, so literally it would be maybe his last time to be that character before they completely erase him forever. Uh, I mean, may- maybe this is a hostile takeover of Rand Enterprises. The yeah. first episode starts off with Danny Red dead in a gutter, and uh, oh. uh, um, they have to solve it, the case. It, it, it was happened. his last <laughs> issue of, of, of being Iron Fist. Um, yeah, yeah I, again, I, I think, you know, the less you have of that, um, that part, the better. Everybody else is there. But, like, if they're bringing everyone together to kind of acknowledge it, if it's there just for uh, – they, they had a dinner. They had a flashback scene. You know, where's everybody at now? Well, you know, Danny's out chasing this, the mythical land of Kunlun or whatever. And we don't – we see him hiking up a mountain, and that's all we see of him. I think that's fine, too. Uh, I just don't want multiple uh, – scenes or returns of his character if you will spider-man 4 mike boy this movie i feel is elusive right this is this is <laughs> going to be the hard one to crack um there were some updates this week that says the script is still in progress without any director or start date i feel that's a good sign right we've never we've not given given a release date but if you haven't committed to anything no one can get fired and you can't mess it up if you don't commit to anything from the start um so that's great, especially with Sony's huge win this year with Madam Web, um, which had a Honest Trailers come out this week. Did you watch that, the Honest Trailers? <laughs> it or, was glorious. I love it. Um, I didn't realize it the first time I watched it, uh, but they brought up how hard it is for uh, Dakota Johnson to open a Pepsi can in that movie. Because uh, <laughs> they only gave her one. <laughs> they only gave her one. And it, there are so many scenes of her fumbling with that Pepsi can which was wild. So uh, ch- check that out if you get a chance. But, you know, as long as they're taking their time with Spider-Man 4, that's perfectly fine with me. My guess is that this will release between the Avengers films um, or be the first movie after Secret Wars. I think Tom Holland has signed on for Secret Wars. Um, you know, if not the King Dynasty, but definitely Secret Wars. But, you know, I we don't need to rush this movie out. I don't think it's going to add anything to the multiversal scale. Do you? Um, yeah, I mean, like, it, I feel like these Spider-Man movies always come out uh, at a point in the MCU where there is a lot going on, right? Like, they are always writing some sort of hype within, like, the overall, like, uh, universe or storyline. Like, the first Spider-Man uh, Homecoming came out right after, not right after, but after Civil War. So mm-hmm. they had this, like, huge, like, rift between the Avengers, and then, bam, we get a Spider-Man movie. And then uh, Far From Home, not Far From Home, um, yeah, yeah, Far From far Home, home. Yeah. was after was after Endgame. Yep. I mean, uh, what a what a big, like, everyone, like, not only wanted to go see a Spider-Man movie, but, oh, let's see what the ramifications of all of that are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, uh, f- uh, No Way Home, you know, that was I, on the, what was that on the tail of? Well, it came out um, after Eternals, um, but it, it essentially had a huge finale for Spider-Man, and then Doctor Strange followed it up. So, yeah, that's right. I mean, there was a lot of just multiversal stuff yeah. boiled in it, that. So it, I feel like they they never release a new Spider-Man movie just, you know, in like a in like an empty kind of era of Marvel. Yeah. Like if a Spider-Man movie was to come out now, it would feel very like, oh, well, what's it playing off of? It's just right. it's not really uh, riding a wave of anything it, right now. So, yeah, I think you're right. It seems like if we're going to get another Spider-Man, it's going to be around like an an Avengers movie. Yeah, that uh, and then that and, and that's fine with me. I think the thing is, you know, the Spider-Man three, literally, I think was the biggest component. That and Doctor Strange are the biggest tent poles for the multiverse saga, right? I I don't think that's disagreeable. That the Loki show. So like by having Spider-Man be a huge part of this, you can let him rest for the rest of the the uh, I, I guess phases until you have your big events, and then he can do a small story because we ended. Spider-Man No Way Home with a very, very uh, a small story, like kickoff Spider-Man himself by himself again. Let's let's live with that a little bit. He doesn't need to go huge. So I think I think that'll be fun. Uh, speaking of Spider-Man, uh, the Spider-Verse movies. Did you know this weekend was going to be the original weekend that uh, the third Spider-Verse movie was supposed to come out? Uh, that feels about right. It does feel about right. So that's sad that we didn't get that. But uh, Sony released this week a short called The Spider Within. It's a short film uh, um, or movie or whatever you would call it on YouTube that was uh, created in collaboration with the Kevin Love Fund for Mental Health Awareness. So 
This is a little video about Miles' life dealing with the heavyweights of being a superhero, being Spider-Man, being a son, being in school, everything that's on his mind as a young teenager and you know coming home and how does he deal with that and what does that really manifest itself as. Uh, it brings back the original voice actors uh, for Miles and his dad um, and it's really, you know, well done short video and then on the youtube page it has a fundraiser so if you want to donate to the kevin love fund for mental health awareness you can do so right from the page so while it doesn't affect miles story in any way it is great to use such a popular character uh, as a platform to speak to the youth about you know the um, not dangers of mental health but like what can you do to, to to be help yourself right don't be afraid to talk about it at the yeah end that's the cool i like that um, so if you want to check that out, that's great. I'm going to probably actually give it to my wife to take to her school. She teaches fifth graders and, you know, like, Hey, you know, you ever want to use Spider-Man as a way to, to say, Hey, it's okay to feel overwhelmed. It's okay to want to talk about problems in your life. Um, this is, you should show this off because it was really cool, but it looks just like Spider-Verse. So, you know, if you're looking for get your Spider-Verse fix, this is the way to do it at the end of the day. Mike, CCXP is one of my favorite events because we always forget about it, right? We always call it Brazil Comic Con. Um, but uh, the first ever CCXP Mexico is happening in May. So we're going to have a May Comic Con, Mike. Uh, and it's going to be the first one. So they have some new badges here for this. Um, uh, so uh, you can see the boys. There's a couple of the boys ones. But um, CCXP Mexico uh, coming out. Uh, that means since it's the first one and it's so big, it's, it's country. It's named after a country, right? Um, I think we're going to see a lot of stuff come out in May that we didn't normally get before for this. Yeah. We, we always underestimate that the fanfare for just comic book and nerdy stuff, um, in South America or oh, I guess, I think Mexico is technically North America. It's North still. America, but uh, the, the Latin countries, Latin speaking countries. Yeah. I think I'm thinking of uh, Brazil that has the other, was it cinema con they've had they, in the it's, past or they, cinema con and also CCXP in Brazil. Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, we always underestimate it, which means we never expect for huge announcements to come out of it. So, um, so yeah, set your set your dials, your clocks to May. Yes, absolutely. We're going to be coming back with that. We'll probably have full coverage. I'm very, very excited to, to see what comes out. You know, the boys, I remember when we went to, again, San Diego Comic-Con, and the boys was there as their first big appearance before the show debuted, and how well that's, how big that's become and how much that has grown since its launch. So... If the boys feel like this is a, a place to be, Amazon feels it's a great place for them, we'll we'll be there covering that. Not really be there, but we'll be here covering there. Yeah, you get it. Uh, lastly, Invincible Season uh, 2. Um, it's in the back half of Season 2, Mike. Are you going to wait and binge it? I assume you've not been keep, keeping up weekly. No, I've, I've watched a couple episodes of, I guess, the first half of the second season whenever I kind of get a free moment and I remember, oh, yeah, I have Amazon Prime. Oh, yeah, that's right. Invincible is on there. I yeah. have to kind of be reminded of its existence, which sometimes I might get a little targeted ad and it'll remind me to go watch it. But, uh, yeah, it's been fun. I the the very first episode like kind of starts off with like a fake out of uh, like an alternate universe and it's like oh this is this is fun this is great and i you know i always forget how amazing the voice cast is in general yeah well be prepared to forget some more voice cast mike because ezra miller has been recast in season two uh <laughs> after all his troubles and controversies um and those have been several years now right uh, you know uh for for them so they have not been in trouble recently but i'm sure they recorded this years ago for invincible right they do the voice recording well before they they put it to animation uh -huh. so uh they voiced the villainous da sinclair uh in the show and they have been replaced in season two i don't know who replaced them i've not followed enough but um i thought it was interesting uh because as you mentioned the voice cast in invincible is just top notch they they, they bring uh -huh. out the best for even the littlest roles right even the, the small inconsequential pieces of this and I'm, I'm familiar invincible has been following the comic book version pretty well some people have sent me some scenes from the latest episodes uh to watch because uh obviously it is a very uh gruesome show at points right very gross very kind of boysish even at some points so uh in terms of violence blood gore and uh it will probably keep doing that for the rest of the season season two is not over yet so there's still some episodes to drop mike so you can uh 
I still haven't watched it because I've read the books. So I probably just need to sit down and binge it sometime when I can. Uh, that's the show for this week, Mike. Anything else you want to add? X-Men related, preferably? Because no, we're an X-Men show now? Just come back next week. We're going to talk. We'll, we'll talk more X-Men. Yeah, we'll, sure. talk, we'll talk more X-Men. I think what I'm going to do in terms of X-Men, I have been uh, dying to revisit X-Men Legends, the video games. Are you familiar with those? Remember those? Mm-hmm. So I've yeah. got X-Men Legends 1 and 2, and those were really fun. They, those set the scene for Marvel Ultimate Alliance. It's the same gameplay. So I think I'm going to dive into those on my uh, the Xbox I got for my birthday and uh, play some of those old X-Men games like that. But Love it. If people want to know what you're up to, what you're doing, where can they find you at? Oh, they can find my web comics at liferewardsrisk.com and pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to catch you, where can they find you? Find me on Instagram, valdan87, V-A-L-D-A-N, or video game systems of the same name, or come back every week where we're here. If people know about the show, where they can like us, subscribe us, leave us a review, whatever they want to do, buy merch, where can they get all that good stuff at? Oh, all you got to do is head on over to superheroslate.com. Com. That is our spooky haunted house where we baptize our children in mysterious green goo, superheroslate.com. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever else you love to listen to fine podcasts like our own. Uh, you can get merch at superheroslate.com slash store. We love hearing from you. Uh, uh, do you think the X-Men are too sexy or not sexy enough? Reach out and let us know. Uh, and if you want to be a super fan of the show, all you got to do is share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy, and we'll be here every week, folks. That's right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.